One of the annoying things is when World War II is discussed between Americans and British people, is sometimes you'll get very silly situations in which Americans will start going, we saved your ass, and British people will respond, you are late to the party, and conversation will degrade into, well, to the point where they're no longer useful. Um, some people seem to like pouring oil on that fire. Now, of course... The reality is that friendly fire situations, which occur in all wars, are not something confined to Americans. And you would expect to find Americans having quite a lot because they have a very large army. Also, when World War II started, the US Army was initially quite small because America was a, had an isolationist mentality and it had to grow its army massively to take part. It grew its army from a very small peacetime army into a very large army suddenly. Also, despite the re, uh, any nonsense to the contrary, you may say on movies, uh, war is messy. No plan survive contact with the enemy, to quote a, a famous uh, cliche. Stuff goes wrong. Bombs land short. They're not well designed. The infamous torpedoes that did not work for the US Navy, which were a scandal in World War II, etc., etc. Now, I'm only going to stick to World War II because for the sake of this argument, but here's a whole sodding list of them down the side here. So let's do World War II. 19, uh, 39, 6th of September, just three days, just days after the start of the war, it was the Battle of Barking Creek. Three Royal Air Force Spitfires from 74 Squadron shot down through hurricanes from the rear of 56 Squadron. No Americans involved there then, were they? 10th of September, the British submarine HMS Triton sank another British submarine. The um, list of stuff that's involved goes on for page after page after page after page. And here we have 10th of May, 1940. German Luftwaffe has actually ended up bombing a German city instead by accident and bombing their own people and killing 57 people. There's also a famous one in the Hague, of the Hague, sorry, where the British bombed and killed over 500 people later in the war. These are not an indication that the British or the Germans or the Americans are all thick or incompetent. It just happens. Mistakes and silliness happen as part of war. Nor is it an indication that arguments should evolve to silliness like the Americans coming along going, we saved your ass and that. But what happens when you sort of start conversations like that and poor fire is where it will go. And it's interesting that a number of channels started pouring those comments out and videos, just as you had Biden saying he was not considering not supplying weapons to Israel. Funny coincidence, or, or perhaps it's not, perhaps it's serendipity, synchronicity. The, the gears of the universe grinding together in a, in a fashion that... Mere mortals cannot can comprehend. It should also be borne in mind that Israel has one of the most famous cases of friendly fire. Here's an article about paying homage to foreign volunteers who died in the fight for Israel's independence. Memorial Day is a poignant date to visit the Mahal mo Monument and grand grounds in the verdant Judean hills west of Jerusalem. The most famous vo volunteer to serve in Israel's War of Independence was David Mickey Marcus, who became the first Brigadier General in the Israeli Army. Sometimes he's listed as a Major General due to the complexity of the way ranks worked and were changed as the Israeli state evolved and came into being. Marcus, a Jewish colonel in the United States, was army was summoned to Mandatory Palestine before the declaration of the State of Israel to help shape the Ghana, the Jews in paramilitary defence force, into a modern fighting unit, known by the pseudonym Stone. Marcus had never been an active Zionist, well, not to that point. Nevertheless, he was delighted when he was asked to use his military expertise for the good of the Jewish people. Marcus threw himself into the struggle. 
His experience in Asia made him such an invaluable asset to the war effort that he was named a brigadier general and commander of the Jerusalem Front on the May the 28th, 1948. Less than two weeks after his appointment, following an exhausting day of battle, Marcus walked outside his camp in the Jerusalem Hills to relieve himself. It should be noted, as the article goes on to say, Marcus spoke little Hebrew. Still unversed in Hebrew, he didn't reply with the password when challenged by a cautious sentry. Two more calls went unanswered before the guard nervously fired his gun. Marcus died from a bullet wound to his chest shot by a Jewish guard, which was a catastrophe and a tragedy. Um, His contribution is also immortalised, as the article notes, in a 1960s film starring Kirk Douglas. Now, that's just an example of the tragedies and realities and messiness of war. And it's not confined to Americans, Jews, Irish, British, Russians or anyone else. Any list of friendly fire incidents would include all of those countries. And it would go on for thousands and thousands of pages and be messy and complex and contradictory. But of course, it's much easier to stick up a a video showing about how Americans do it all the time at the moment when Biden is putting out a, a sort of policy that's not liked. Have a good evening there.